Today we're gonna be discussing three ways to improve your phrasing. What we're talking about today is less speed and technique and more focused on the meaning behind each and every note. The first thing is to take a look at the chords in a given progression or the song, get familiar with them, get familiar with the rhythm that is used, and that's gonna help out a lot when it comes to soloing. The second thing is to take a look at what key the song's in, what scales can work, the pentatonics, the major scales, are you gonna use the cage system over it, different things like that. Also take a look at arpeggio shapes, like different triads on the fretboard, what might look good over those different chords. And the last thing, number three, is what I call placement, which is going through and basically what we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be going over this solo here in a second, going through and you've decided which scales work, you know the chords, you know the arpeggios, the placement is choosing out of those seven notes of the major scale, say, which are the best notes to play right now over a specific chord, okay? The first chord of this progression is a C-sharp minor seven, so we need to come into the mindset knowing which are the best notes of the given key that's gonna work over that, and that's placement, placing those right notes at the right time over the right chord. Now we're gonna take those three things and apply it to this song right here. We're gonna go over the chords, we're gonna talk about the scales that work, and then we're gonna go through and analyze kind of the placement I chose to use. I'm gonna cut this into a part one and a part two. The part two goes into a, a little bit different of a chordal direction, so it's gonna take a little bit more time to talk about, but this one's kind of straightforward. This song's an E major, uh, and the progression is very simple. It's a C sharp minor seven chord. Right? And then it followed by a G sharp minor. And then it goes A to an E. And it just repeats that. Now the next step, so we know the chords, we can play the rhythm right there. Now let's think about what scale shapes in, that we can use and arpeggio shapes that we can use over this. So right off the bat, I'm thinking pentatonic, okay? So I would kind of look over the fretboard, see all the different major, E major pentatonic shapes. Um, to me, my, I played the rhythm in this area, so my instant kind of grab pentatonic wise was position four, which looks like this. Right, so I went right there. You could call that encaged, you could call that the C shape. Uh, scale there So I just like oh, it's right there. It's where I'm playing the chords. Let's start there um, So I chose pentatonic you also could have chose the major scales or ran through different ones like Right find find which ones work for you So you kind of know your way around the progression here the next thing is to look at the arpeggio So what I mean by that is go chord by chord. So start off with C sharp uh, you know, minor seven or C sharp minor, and I would walk through different triad shapes like. You know, I would look at that, try to get my eye to see those different shapes. You know, you could walk the different cage shapes of uh, like C minor or whatever and kind of freshen your mind to that. Then go to the next chord, go to the G sharp minor chord. And kind of look around the fretboard. Find your little little shapes. I'm like, oh, that's a cool shape. I like that shape. Um, you know, this one's a pretty good one as well. Just go through there, see those shapes. So you're kind of seeing the good scales that work, and then you're seeing these little arpeggios. With the arpeggios are like little hacks. They're like, if you see the arpeggio shapes, you know there's gonna be great notes to play over that given chord. The next chord's A. So you go through. Start looking at the different notes involving that A chord. Kind of fresh and still, we're still thinking E major here, E major pentatonic, the E major scale, but we're seeing these little kind of triad shapes, arpeggios whenever we need to. Finally, the root, which is E major. You know, seeing. This is where cage comes in handy, which I haven't talked about much, but I'm kind of I'm kind of getting on the cage bandwagon. It really helps start seeing these chord shapes across the whole fretboard. But just 
just go through there. Those all those are kind of a bunch of E shapes. I don't have time in this video to go through each and every one, unfortunately, but it is good to go through that. That's we're in step two right now. Now, finally, getting into step three, we're gonna talk about what I did over this part one here. The solo, what I played so far, is very simple. It sounds like this. I went. Right? So I'm gonna go, I kinda went phrase by chord. So almost like one phrase per chord, uh, give or take. Sometimes I hold out a note a little longer, but on the first little chord there, I go, of that C sharp minor seven, I went. I wanted to target the minor third of that chord, which ends up being the E note. So I'm in here position for the pentatonic. And I just go. And I wanted to hit this note on the downbeat, so I came in on kind of like, um, I don't, I don't, I'm not the best with rhythms, but like maybe the, the end of four of the previous measure. I don't know the science, but I, kind of, I want, wanted that minor third sound right on the downbeat of that chord. So I did that. It's the first phrase. That's just on the G string, four to six. Just pick that. I'm using my fingers. Pick that, slide six, and then hit that E note there on the fifth fret of the B string. Now, I know our next chord's gonna be a G-sharp minor chord. I'm like, what's the easiest way to play a good note over that? There's actually two ideas that come to mind for me. We could walk down one fret and target the fifth of the G-sharp minor. Ends up being that D-sharp there. So we could've went. Right, we could've did a phrase like that. I chose to actually just bend to the root. I kept it a little bit more pentatonic, bent to the root note, which was that little slow bend I did. It's actually a really strong note because I'm bending to the root of the current chord. So I went. Now over the A chord, I don't do anything. I just kind of let it let it do its thing there. But what I think, what I realize here is I go, if I went, I, got, I have this bend held out and I just gotta go. And now I resolve perfectly to the next chord, of E chord, right? So I got this phrase over the C sharp minor seven, targeting that minor third. Goes goes to that G sharp minor. I could have done, uh, you know, went there, targeted the fifth. I decided to walk up with a little bend there on the seventh fret of the B string, whole step bend, hold it out, and then I do like a pre bend, and that's back to the E chord which is the last chord of the uh, chord progression. Now it's restarting. It's back to C sharp, C sharp minor seven. And I'm like, okay, I want to change it up a little bit. I want to progress the solo. I went, I went to the high E here on the seven, slide nine, back to seven. Right, that's a B to a C sharp, back to a B. Now what is that is I'm, I'm kind of targeting that minor seven sound over that C sharp minor seven. The next phrase I do is kind of over that A chord. I slide from this B note to the E note, which is the root of the key, but it's the fifth of the current chord. If it's over the A, the fifth of A is E. So I went. Now I did the next phrase. So I just, I, I, I did the slide like this and then I slide all the way up to that E note there. And then I follow that up with this phrase, which is just on the high E, I go uh, 11, half step in, back down and then pull off to the ninth fret of the high E. Which, and that's over the E chord. I'm hitting that C sharp note right there over the E chord, which is not a strong note, okay? it's To me, it's a very weak note. It's not in the chord, it's the sixth of the chord. It's not the best note. But one of the reasons I, I kinda, I just like the sound genuinely in that context, but one of the reasons I kinda went for it is in part two, um, the chord progression changes a little bit and instead of the E chord being the last chord of the progression, it's actually the first chord. So we get two E chords back to back. So it would, it kind of ends up, I'll just play the progression, what happens, it goes. And then part two goes like this. So it starts with that E, uh, e chord as well. And I kind of wanted to resolve and do kind of a, a lick on that new progression based off that E. And I didn't want to resolve twice over that chord. So I kind of went with the uh, the C sharp note there because it's a, it had a nice sound, I like the sound, but it wasn't too strong, too resolved of the sound. I kind of saved that for the next chord. So, that's, so, so far, this is what we have. We have.
right? And I'm also kind of back in my back in my mind thinking call and response phrases a little bit here, but really, as you can see, it very little technique is needed to do these little phrases, and very you know no speed, nothing like that but it's kind of strategic on placement of those specific notes. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions down below.